I'm good. Christmas is done and over. I got a bit of a break. I feel refreshed. Yes. Yeah. I wish I had a little bit longer break. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just so everybody in the chat knows, there is quite a bit of a lag between Carly and I. So if we both look like we're just kind of stopped <laughs> with nothing to say, it's because we're giving each other a chance to talk. <laughs> so where are you right now, Carly? I am in Idaho. <laughs> and you are working in Idaho right now too, right? What was that? You're working in Idaho? Yes. Yeah, I'm working just down the street from where I live. <laughs> okay. Because I think in one of your last videos, you were talking about getting, uh, or you took time off at Home Depot. Um, I still work at Home Depot full time. Yeah. Awesome. But I, I am going on like some vacations here and there. Nice. So... Carly, when I first started watching you, I remember just seeing this, and this was before I had my ambulance or anything, but I watched this young girl have nothing but problems on the road with that camper van. <laughs> what was that like? Uh, what was it like to be broken down a lot? <laughs> Well, um, it was actually pretty fun. Um, until the last breakdown, I kind of was like trying to coast along and just like, it comes with the territory. <laughs> so um, I think it was cool to see all the people come together to help me whenever something would happen. But um, usually before I ever filmed anything, it was a phone call to my dad of, my car is making this noise. Can you help me figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But you were, what, 22 when you bought that? Yes, I was 22. And what was your plan? Um, It was just supposed to be a solo travel. So I, um, I was like, I watched a video online, and it was a cute couple, and they were living in a van for four years. And I was like, wow, I think I can do something like that. So... Like within a month of me seeing that video and having the idea, I bought a van and then six months later I was on the road. Wow, you didn't waste any time. No, <laughs> I had a, a fair bit of savings already and the van didn't take a whole lot of money. So um, I was able to jump out on the road quick. Wow. So how long did you live off those savings or did you work while you're on the road? Like how, how did you support yourself? I did savings for almost mm, eight months, ten months, and then um, I started my YouTube channel about eight months after I started on the road, but I didn't make money until I had the YouTube channel for almost a year, and so I was not making any money, but um, so the timeline goes that I started on the road August of 2016, and then I got my first season job April of 2017, and that's that's where I made some money, but I was just like a stipend worker for a conservation corps. I didn't make very much money at all. Mm -hmm. So you've picked up different jobs along the way? Yeah, and I just kept my expenses super low. I tried to stay under $1,000 for everything, um, and I always do that. Yeah, you you have a lot of videos on how to save money, how to do things affordably, what do you really need and don't need, like stuff that's really valuable to know. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I tried to be helpful, but I didn't know if I was just telling people to have a horrible diet or <laughs> live a horrible lifestyle. I, I was, It's working for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought it was pretty inspirational. And I mean, the one running theme for you is you always had a smile on your face. You always found joy in something. Oh, well, I, I, so like, depending on the day, I see pictures, like my phone will bring me, bring up pictures of memories from the past. And I'll be like, oh, I wish I was camping right now. Oh, 
I wish I was at a campfire. I wish I was with my friends. I wish I was in a van or something. But um, mm-hmm. I need to stay put for a while, I guess. <laughs> so um, what – oh, there was one thing I was going to ask you. So what vehicle do you have now? I have a – uh, 1998 Toyota RAV4. A RAV4. And I saw you do some winter camping in that. How was Not that experience? Exactly. It was horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I So, like, the main point of contention was I could not lay down anywhere, any which way. There was no laying down in that vehicle. So, um, I didn't sleep during that trip, but I, I wish I would have because I would have stayed out a lot longer, but I only think I spent two nights in it and then I gave them back home. What is it like being out there by yourself like that, especially in the winter, like during the day in that video, there was nobody to be seen except for at nighttime, a couple of vehicles drove by and didn't even stop to see if you were, if there was anyone in there or if you were okay out in the wilderness and the snow. Honestly, I feel safer when they don't stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I kind of know that when I go out on the road, I want to be left by myself. And I will stick a thumb out if I need help. I'm pretty good at that. But um, I really like being by myself. Something about it is just like super calming to um, be out in nature. And yes, I do get petrified five sometimes but I try to not let those feelings take over too much I don't like watch scary movies I don't read scary stories I don't listen to podcasts about murders all my friends do that and I'm like that's why you don't camp (laughs) (laughs) good point wow so you you sold your camper van for something that's not as convenient to camp in, but it's more reliable, I would imagine. Yes. And it um, gets like 20 miles per gallon, which is way better than the van. Mm-hmm. So do you ever think of looking at building out another van? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm watching an auction for a van right now. I just can't decide how much I'm willing to spend on it. <laughs> yeah. Just saving up a couple more bucks so you can have money for the build? <laughs> the build will be the cheap part. It's getting the van and hoping it's reliable. Um, it's a 2011 Ford Transit, one of the really small ones. I think I can stand up. It. It's the height that model is the right height. And it's just like it's super clean on the inside. I fell in love with it. My dad showed it to me on Christmas. He's like, oh, I'm watching this auction van. I was like, dad, I want it. <laughs> but um, I don't know if it'll jump out of my brain on the day of the auction, which is Wednesday. So, Oh, well, good luck. You know, we'll all wish you good <laughs> luck for that one. You know, I didn't think yeah. you'd probably sit tight for very long. That doesn't seem in your nature. No. And thankfully, my boyfriend, when we were first kind of meeting each other and chatting online he was like oh yeah I really want to get a, a Delica and build it out and I was like you oh, for the right girl <laughs> that's all I know how to do <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so cute Carly <laughs> yeah how long have yeah, you been was... together is that the fellow in the last videos when you guys did all the desert trips yeah, we um we met in August. So then in October we went on that big trip together. He had just bought the van like the week before. So it was really good timing all of that. Well, and I, I watched those videos and it's just so funny seeing a vehicle that the driver is on the right hand side. Was that weird to be in the passenger in the driver's seat? It was because I was like on my phone and I'd be like looking up every once in a while and I catch the eye of other drivers and I like eventually got to the point where I needed to start waving them on because they were confused why I wasn't paying attention to them because they they were like an attentive driver. 
Oh yeah. You just look like you're texting and not paying any attention. <laughs> I never thought of that. Uh, or we'd be in traffic and somebody like on my side would be like like giving me like the weirdest look. I'd be like, What's wrong? I'm just on my phone and then I'd be like, Oh they think I'm supposed to be driving and then they start making faces and smile and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought of that. Oh my goodness, that is too funny. So do you think you and him will travel together at some point? Yeah, I think so. Right now, like, my job has a real damper on things. And I did sign an apartment apartment lease. So I think like, I need to kind of play out their time. And then we'll probably be traveling together in the winter. Since he has a summer job, I want to try and get on with summer with a summer job too. And we can spend six months traveling there, which is like the best time to travel anyway. Nice. Well, you've done some work camping. How was that experience? Um, not making faces. Uh, <laughs> posting, if that's the one you're referring to, was like, I was not cut out, my personality was not cut out for like that company or that kind of job, but I was loved it if um, I had maybe a little bit more support and a little bit better of a camper to take care of um, handling it all by myself and getting like misinformation and like the short end of the stick all the time was not mm -hmm. fun. No. Well, I, you know, I was watching that and that's something I thought of down the road, like if I retire and I mean, I can always ask Aaron Jemison about this too, that him and his wife do it. But, you know, I live in Canada, so to stay in British Columbia in the summers and kind of take care of a campground and then travel south in the winter, that's kind of like a dream for me. So I wouldn't even know, I wouldn't even know what to look for because they usually want couples, right? You got a job as a single solo person. Mm-hmm. And they don't usually hire people that aren't self-contained. So me being a van, I don't have like the electricity and the bathroom and all the stuff that they normally like kind of require of a vehicle um, of people like gonna be camped. So I that was part of the reason why I got the short end the stick was that I wasn't like a permit, like a full camper camp host in their I view. I guess. And so they kind of could just put me wherever they wanted. Um, but then once I got my own campground, it was a lot of work to do by myself. But I had almost the biggest campground in the area. I had like 50 campsites. And, and when they were all full, it was a couple hundred people. And then another few hundred people would be just in the day use area. So I was like one girl manning sometimes 500 people on the weekend and that is a lot to handle and then clean up and then make sure like talk to all the law enforcement and the wood and just be kind of managing people trying to help them like campfires and make sure their kids don't die and <laughs> it was yeah madness. but if you want to do it a little person there were some other campgrounds in the area where it was just a couple, you know, so people and they loved it. They had a completely different experience than me. They had like 15 campsites to take care of, one or two pit toilets to clean and secluded only like the diehards would come out of their, their site and they, it was just like income come true. And then I'm over on the other end of the lake, like pulling my hair up and saying, Oh, you poor girl. We have a question for you in the chat, Carly. Um, okay. Lisa Lisa Artscape Adventures asks, do you have artwork on your channel? Um, Lisa Lisa artwork. Um, I don't think I put oh, any wait of my art really Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's TV2 Live asking Lisa Lisa. <laughs> I, you know what? I just found my glasses and I should have really put them on today. I'm using smaller stuff here. Oh, sorry about that. that we got the new no, bubble thingy. 
Dodge Valley says the problem is people want to live in a van. Better to think, sleep in a van. It can change the mood. Yeah, I know in one of your videos, you really talked about you need, if you're going to spend money, make sure you have a good bed. Yeah. Yeah, by all means. Like, that's, if you don't sleep, well, you're going to have bad days. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. Um, so I haven't hit the road in the way that you have. What are some things that you've learned that you would share with me to help me have a more successful trip? Um, I would say people get really excited and just start driving and they don't know where they're going to park the first night. We'll probably have some bad days ahead. If you plan out where you want to park and you have a few backups so don't work, that'll make it a lot easier. A lot of the like last minute scrambling to find a campsite before dark. I go to campgrounds um, and RV parks. They they usually have a pretty good time, um, but I I didn't do that. So I would recommend going on to like free campsites. Net. Have you used that before? No. So I. Th I think I hope to have bought Canada, but it's definitely in America where um, people, it's like user maintained and they put up all these free campsites that you can go hang out at. And a lot of them are in beautiful places or right outside of areas that are super beautiful. Um, I think, mm, I guess, it's, what kind of experience do you want to have? Where are you wanting to go? <laughs> Well, I definitely, I definitely want to do things on a budget. And I know that you did that. And that didn't stop you from having your adventures. Yeah. So it's like national parks, investing a lot into a pass and going. There is free camping around all the national parks that I've been to. So you shouldn't ever have to pay a night. Um, you get into the park with your pass. And then if you just, decide to explore one park a week, you'll, you can have adventures for months. And um, I think probably the best videos come when I just had a, a spot to go hike around and um, explore. And I like national parks as well because they teach you about the landscape that you're in. Then when I'm mm -hmm. not in the national park anymore, I start identifying plants and animals, and it, it just gets really fun really quickly. <laughs> Nice. So where are some of the next places you think you want to see? Well, I've always had, it's going to, I've always wanted to be an international traveler and living in a van was um, kind of like a random version of travel that I had never pictured for myself. My chalk wall before I even thought of living in it. I had like 10 countries listed on there that I wanted to go to. So I really have like just a burning desire to go to every continent. And I know people say like, oh, you can buy a van on every continent and do it that way. I'm like, I'd love to do that. But my budget doesn't look like that yet. Um, so I think right now on my like, I need to go to is Egypt, um, just because I have a huge thing for history and the pyramids and I don't know, it's just a kind of mind to go be on a camel in front of the pyramids. <laughs> so would you do like, um, you know, hitchhiking and staying in hostels and stuff like that if you were overseas? Yes, that's how I like to travel, getting anybody to come with me that is not out any of my friends would prefer to travel. So I kind of get stuck doing those kind of trips by myself. That's why Cambodia kind of looked like way it did. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, you're in an apartment right now and you're working and stuff. Um, is that just because of the worldwide events or is this just your way to save up to go again? Um. So it started off because I broke out and then that was last two Novembers ago. 
And then I got a job as a travel agent in January a year ago and thought that was going to be like my new tick traveling in a different way. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I, I was like, ooh, here I can be a jet setter. I don't even, um, <laughs> I mean, I thought I'd probably will eventually get one. Um, then I lost that job because of what was happening and kind of just was like, oh, I need to hunker down. So that's why I'm still in an apartment of a van. Financially, I just, uh, I feel like I need to pay my bills before I go buy another vehicle. Yeah. So Land Cloud Adventures says, who are some of Carly's favorite YouTube channels to watch? And saying Van Vita is cheating. Nate, behave. Carly, <laughs> Carly, what is what is some of the channels if you watch? Like, who who inspired you to do this? Um, yeah, that couple is. Oh my god, I'm gonna butcher their name. Um, they're a little asphalia, a yellow asphalia that they call it sunshine. Um. Dang Does it. anyone in the chat know who she's referring to? If you do, pop it in there. Yes. Yeah, they've got, um, I think it's Kit and JR is their name, but the name of their channel gave me. Um, I've almost seen them a couple times, but I really like watching them. They don't put out many videos. Um, I like watching... <laughs> Um, Katie and I got, like, I'm going to name some bigger YouTubers because they really inspire me to, like, do better with my video making and mm-hmm. travel more. But Katie and I got Sorel um, for, like, I guess the YouTube side thing. I find myself watching Sunny Leonard Doozy a lot, and she's out of Canada. Um, as far as Vanner and Life people go, I, um, I try to have on enigmatic nomadics and um uh, i've i'm friends with dave t but he does like roasts of van lifers he's a van lifer too but now he lives in a house um yeah i'm sure well in the dawn of van life um her and i are pretty good friends so yeah the dawn of van life she met Chrome Van City Van Life. She went up to Canada, didn't she? For like, was it a Christmas one year or something like that, or some gathering? Yes, yeah, I think she she went up there she's on the coast a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I I'm sub to her channel too. I just don't get to watch people as much anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I. Sorry. No, okay. I didn't know what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, so Going Green Mom has it as Kit and JR Sunshine. Does that sound right? Yes, that and is she them. Like really zombie life? Their YouTube. Oh, they changed it. That oh, wasn't the name of the channel before, but yes, that's them. <laughs> The combi life or the kitten JR sunshine? Um, it's not combi life. Okay. Uh, they are different. I think that you Combi life, life, I think it's Canadian, um, aren't they? Who is? Combi life, isn't that Canadian? I, I can't even remember. I might be. Mm hmm. They're awesome. I haven't watched um, any other videos. But you found them to be inspirational. Now, what is it about them that drew you into this lifestyle? It was, I think the first video that I came across that was people living in a van. And it was kind of like their little four-minute inspirational video from shots of their van driving down the road and kind of, they're really both really good storytellers. So she was um, 
talking about how they break down all the time, but they push through it and just um, wouldn't imagine their life anything, any way differently. And um, all that spoke to me. And I was like, sign me up. Where do I get a van? <laughs> awesome. That is so awesome. And it's so awesome that you started doing that when you're only 22 years old, because to me, that is an ideal time to get out there and experience the world. Yeah, I'll, almost everybody I met was significantly older than me once I started meeting people. For six months on the road, I thought it was the only person in the world who decided to live in a van. And it was very isolating, very lonely. It was hard to get through some days. I would like call home crying, freaking out that I decided to do something really weird. Nobody, nobody understood what I was doing. But mm -hmm. um I met one guy and he's like, there's this gathering in Arizona for people who live in bands. And I was like, I should go. <laughs> I need some friends. And uh, that is where I met everybody that I just like a community that was so welcoming and like made me not feel like an alien anymore. So, but I was still very young compared to everyone out there. Uh, just because it seemed to be more of like a retirement solution and uh, something you do in your 20s. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you found that community because Jeepers, when you started, there wouldn't have been as many van life channels as there is now. No, there was only a couple that I was even paying attention to um, that made sense because I remember like, looking up like trying to find a blog that talked about living in a van and there was this really upsetting one about this guy who spent a month in a van and he didn't shower the whole time and he had to stop because he was getting so depressed he would just like park on the side of the road and i'm like okay that is not everyone's experience who are the people where are the people having fun doing this <laughs> <laughs> oh it's you that's what we like watching you carly Yes. So do you feel like you've grown as a person in this experience? Oh, yeah, for sure. It definitely spoke to my personality to be challenged on a daily basis. Um, <laughs> see what like new recipe I could come up with and um, how many times I could see in a week and um, just loving the campsites and First, it was how many states I could go to. I hit like 15 states in the first couple months, and I'm like, wow, I need to slow down. This is too much fun. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. So where did you get the idea to start your channel then? Because how, how long were you doing Van Life again before you started your channel? Um, I started living in a van in August of 2016 and I think I put up one of my first videos in February of 2017 and I had met one YouTuber and he kind of showed me how he edits and stuff and I was like hmm, okay it doesn't look that hard I, I never edited video before um, and then I met but the RTR in January and so there's a few more YouTubers specifically Aja from Pandemonium. She was like, oh, it's so easy. Just start a channel. It's like, here, I'll do an interview of you, but you got to know that everybody coming over to your channel that you started is going to want to see a video. So you need to put one up. And she was not kidding. I got like 600 subscribers from her just from that very first interview. And I was like scrambling to put up a, a tour of my van. And I, it's honestly one of my worst videos. I was surprised it has as many views as it does because I made some of that music and it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, 600 viewers just like that. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. She had a lot of polls. She had a lot of people that watched her religiously and they still do. She's still an awesome channel to follow. Um, and then a few months later, I did my seasonal job and then I met everybody at the van build. Um, they did another interview of me and then that one like really jumped me up. And so I was um, pretty close to monetization level um, 
around November of 2017. So that was when I first made my first few dollars. It took me another like 10 months to reach the threshold of $100 to get a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I've just become monetized, so I hear you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's slow but exciting. You're like twenty bucks, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I noticed you have grown like you just caught on fire. You have one video that has quarter of a million views. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, Tabitha, she's a friend of mine, also met her at the RTR. Um, she now lives in a tiny home, and she just, like, finished it up, had only been living in it for a couple months, and she was like, can I do a tour? So um, I don't know why that video, besides that people love tiny homes, and it's a very long video. Um, they, they just fell up with it and fell in love with Tabitha, so the way great she did it such a good job with it that is so awesome and your channel you you cover a variety of things like you have several interviews that have all done very well and you've done product reviews and suggestions and trips and daily life what what's been the most fun part for you oh um they're all really exciting to make. Some are easier than others. I really like interviews because that can where I get to learn a lot from other people. Um, mm -hmm. All the videos seem to me seem to be just like me talking and like sharing my ideas. But I really like the interviews because um, I like showing off other people and what they've you know made. And um, I really like doing the daily vlogs because. It helps me pay attention to the day. I mean, sometimes it gets overwhelming if I try to do it like weeks on end, but here and there doing a vlog, it's it's really cute to like, um, see the things that I am missing out on in a different light, you know, through day. Like, oh, people like the way I make breakfast. Okay, throw some cabbage in there. <laughs> so what has been i just see i have so many questions what has been the toughest part of your trips and then i do have a couple questions on on um like how long it took you to hit those 15 states and where do you still want to go but but i want to know first <laughs> um how like what what have been some of the worst challenges other than the vehicle breakdowns other than the vehicle breakdowns um so the first night in the van, I tried stealth camping. I do not recommend that. Like I said, for the first night, please plan out where you're going. It makes it a whole lot easier. But I just like drove to a national monument and just like could stealth camp on the side of the road. I actually tried in a parking lot at first. It was not a Walmart parking lot. I spent, I think, two hours on the phone with my friend freaking out over every pair of car lights I saw. And that kind of anxiety stayed with me for a lot of the three-ish years I was on the road. And I really needed to hone in like the nighttime anxiety of people like knocking on my van door, coming up to me. I actually, like some people were like, oh, wild animals are going to come and like maul you to death. I felt a lot of times comforted when I heard coyotes yelling because it was like, oh, at least, you know, somebody's nearby. Um, it, I'd say the kind of thing I did at nighttime was a huge thing, but also I love being by myself. I'm a lone wolf, um, but I'm also discovering how much of a people, people person I am. So the loneliness, have really got to me sometimes and that was one of the main things that I wanted to figure out how to navigate once I found friends I was how do you guys handle being by yourself most of the year except for the one week you come to the RTR and um they have like really inspiring ways of dealing with it and I think what really solved that issue was starting a YouTube channel 
helpful because then I always felt like I was talking to a friend when I was talking to the camera. That is awesome. That is so awesome. And you know, you could probably still put out videos on how to deal with that, you know, small segmented videos, because I think there's a lot of people that are going through that loneliness, whether they're in a van or not, we're, we're in a time in the world where everybody's so isolated, right? I think anyone mm -hmm. could benefit from learning from you on those things. Aw, yeah, I'll, I love to continue to make videos and I love talking to you because um, I feel isolated from the nomad community and I am so excited to go to Arizona a couple weeks because then I will get to see everybody again. But um, yeah, it is true. But we all, I think everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people should buy YouTube or just documenting their life on any social media platform because it really creates um, a lot of new friendships you would have never guessed you'd had. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. I have to be fair and let the people in the chat get a chance to ask you some questions. I can't hog you all to myself. So Going Green Mom would like to know, how many states have you been to now? I've been to, over my life, 38. And I think I've 38. lived in five. Yeah. And then how long did it take you to hit those first 15 states again? Um, okay, so I started in North Dakota and then went down into South Dakota, Minnesota, um, to Canada, and then Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, I went through Canada again over into New York, Pennsylvania, and then I hit all of New England, and that's how I really got all of my states, and I jumped down um, along the coast down to Florida um, before I went over to Arizona, and that took me six months. started in August in North Dakota, and I was in Arizona in January. Wow. Wow. Uh, did you meet Janelle Atlanta before? No, she really launched her channel and like became in all of our lives right when I got the road. I know she hangs out in California and Dave 2 d has met up with her. She looks really fun to hang out with. Cool. I'm just trying to see what other questions we have in here. I do see that we have some French and English speaking going on in the chat today. Is Megan practicing her French? <laughs> She sees some French Canadians and I think she's brushing up. What was this? Now I'm a little bit behind in the chat. Eagle Ridge says, I actually agree with Carly that the camera was a way to feel like you were connecting with someone. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it. And at first, it's like the hardest hurdle to get over is like listening to yourself and then like watching your face move and stuff and I still find it hard to listen back to myself, but when I'm in the filming process, um, especially on the daily vlogs, it's really easy to like get into the groove of like, I'm just talking to my friend right now. <laughs> I just, for me, I feel like, I don't know what to say. It's going to keep people's attention. Like, how did you even know, how did you even know where to begin with what you were talking about? <laughs> Uh, I think that's a little bit of my ego because <laughs> I will say things are completely wrong and I'm so embarrassed when I get called out. I just start talking and at first I would edit out like all of my really long-winded storytelling and then people would see that I would cut off my editing, like cut off my speech and I was like, yeah, but you really didn't need to hear all that. Um, so I just started being a little bit more um, comfortable with what I talked about so that I I would live in the video, I guess. Mm -hmm. I've done mm -hmm. over 500 videos, so a lot of practice. Wow. Wow, that is a lot of videos, Carly. Oh, my goodness. You would have, wow, you would have learned an awful lot doing that. Yeah. I don't know how I did it. 
<laughs> but I mean, look at how much you've grown as a person through that process. I think that's awesome. Um, I know when I decided I was going to start a channel, my son was very worried about how some people can be unkind online. Is yeah. that something you come across? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, one of my first videos that took off was about the RTR. And I, this was just telling everybody what happened at the RTR. And it was a little bit too much information. So I had, like, some troll accounts jump on there. And they were, like, taking my video and clipping all of the weird parts that I had and together and made the RTR sound like this horrid place nobody should ever go. Because I was like doing like little warning things, like when you go, just hear of this and that. And they just went crazy on that. So I had to do a lot of reporting of people taking my content. And then in the comments of that video, I didn't like, I wasn't wearing any makeup. I had really bad lighting and people thought I was on meth. They <sighs> called me all sorts of names. Um, they pointed out like things about my face and I was just like, okay, I hope that this channel is going to be worth all of this weird trolling. But I eventually just was like deleting comments and I'll delete users. If anybody says anything, partly I, they are off my channel. I have no patience or time for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as a channel grows, there's more of that kind of stuff that happens. Yeah, for sure. And if you don't like have a kind of filter from the beginning, you'll start kind of a snowball effect. And I've seen some channels where the creator did not stop the trolls. They just kept, let them do whatever they wanted to do. And it made all of, it turned into like a war. And then the, the entire channel is just about reacting to the trolls and so i really didn't want to beat that so then when this decides it's really going to hit me hard i'm gonna to have to delete the commenter delete the comments do you address any of it like do you speak to any of it at all nope no nope. because the more that i learn about the online world and uh britain's been really good because he's on like other websites and like forums and he's showing me how they interact with each other and it's entirely like this back and forth like name calling like weird just weirdness that I don't like but that's mm -hmm. what he likes and that those users will come onto YouTube and treat YouTube like that other website and it is a reaction based thing so the best thing I can do is just take them away and then it's like they weren't even there and nobody has to deal with it that's that is so and good also, to know and i agree with prairie life she's like i appreciate what you said about trolls and <laughs> thanks you for that yeah yeah because if if you let them say a few times people have come to my rescue and they're like, oh, don't say that about Carly. She's an amazing person. And I'm like, oh, yay, people like me. But I don't want to put them in a situation where they need to defend my honor to someone who is just trying to make me a crazy. Mm hmm mm hmm Because they're looking for someone to be bothered. They're looking for that reaction. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, yeah, Justin and Christina, they said um, people try to get a reaction out of you. So if you just ignore them, they eventually go away. I guess it's like we teach kids to deal with bullies. Yeah. Yeah, the same okay. concept. So it looks weirder online because you think they are adults and mature and they're not. <laughs> well, I'm never personally going to grow up. So... <laughs> So we literally have only 10 minutes left. Can you think of like some funny or weird story from the road that you've experienced? Oh man. Uh, I'm sure I have so many, but of course you put me on the spot and I can't think of anything. 
See, that's going to be one of those things you're going to just be like, why? Why did I go on her show? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is one of those things that's hard to come up with on the spot, isn't it? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, there is, I guess, funny things are like, being a part of other people's uh, YouTube videos and um, like kind of seeing how you play out on other channels and the meetups have been fun and uh, the, oh my gosh, I guess the shenanigans that happen at meetups kind of take the cake. And okay. the more YouTubers you have at an event, the crazier things get. You live through it and you're like, oh, that was pretty funny. Like, um, the rainstorm at the RTR uh, two years ago, 2019. And you know, Bob said it was not going to rain. It might rain, but it was not going to rain. And then it rained one day, and almost everybody was stuck in the mud. It was just like I had actually been gone getting my radiator replaced during that time, and I was in the downpour just in town. And then I get back to the RTR. People are just like, it's a mud pit. What happened? And so then he spent the rest of the event apologizing for rain. <laughs> I was just like, oh, what? It was, it was a little funny. It was a little funny. And then um, um, I don't know. There's just a van build getting kicked out three times of our location. That one got you on my nerves, but it was. Build? What was that? Did you say you got kicked out of a van build? Yeah, um, the van build of 2017. So the first one that everybody was invited to, we were right behind the Lake Havasu Walmart. And I mean, we should have known that wasn't going to last very long. But within like three or four days, the cops showed up one night and they were like, checking us out, seeing if we're underage. Obviously, like, I was the youngest person there, and everybody was, like, really mad um, that we were going to get kicked out at night. So we had, a, like, we had, like, till the noon to leave. We go to the next location. We get kicked out of that within three days. And then we're sent off into, like, 12 miles down a dirt road, and that's where we were allowed to be. It was just insanity. That's always an experience in the end, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I um, to be with people when it happened. I guess the last question I will ask you, Carly. Oh, and I, I'm so thankful that you came onto the show. But um, there was a question about what equipment are you using right now for filming? Like this live stream or my videos right now? For your videos. I'm going to just try to find that comment again. I am Did you use a phone the phone or? Uh, I used this Canon um, SX730HS until recently. And it's like a selfie Canon power dot. Um, and this is what I filmed everything with. And I just upgraded to, it looks exactly the same, but um, a Canon G7X and it has a mic output. And that's why I went with this one so that I have better audio with my videos. Awesome. And then where do you do your editing on? I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay. And when you're on the road, how do you keep everything charged? I know you've tried a couple different battery packs, some more successful than the others, but how do you manage keeping everything charged now? I really like the Jackery. Um, that one has been reliable, uh, charging things through while I'm driving. And when I stop at libraries, I try to use my laptop then. But I had at the like the last little bit in the van, I had a solar panel and a 12 volt battery 
in the van, a co battery, and it had an inverter. So I could charge my battery or charge my laptop and work at for like maybe five hours a day if I really wanted to and then mm-hmm. on a solar panel. So what's the best thing you think you ever filmed? Like my favorite video I filmed? Yeah. Um, the one where I am in the ultralight flying over. Our I'm sorry, I missed that some one. of that. The the one where I'm flying in the old night over the RTR at sunset. Um, it was highly illegal, but more <laughs> that was made it more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it that was, was my it favorite. Was... I love getting the sunset at, you know, the sunset in the big machine I was on. Mm hmm. So Van Life Rocks is wondering, do you prefer the mountains, the desert or the beach? Um, I think I like the desert because it tends to be the flare. The best weather, did you say? Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Well, Carly, I hate to admit it, but I think we pretty much hit our hour. Darn it, darn it, darn it. <laughs> you you, yeah. you know what? We'll have to get together sometime, even if it's just the two of us, because I'm sure there's lots of stories that may not be appropriate for YouTube that you could probably share with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there might be a few. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like everybody has really liked seeing you come out and coming onto the channel. And I appreciate it more than I could possibly explain. But I do know you have to get up early for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best. And I can't wait to see you hit the road again. I can't wait to see if you get that van. I hope it. everybody say a little prayer for Carly that it goes for a really good price at the auction on Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I hope so. Because <laughs> I'm sure you already have some ideas for things you want and don't want in it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've got so many ideas. I just need to figure out which vehicle they go in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to have an amazing build and you're probably going to do it on a budget, which is just going to make it that much more appealing. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I definitely did mine on a budget and I'm like, I think that makes me even more proud of it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Again, thank you so much. And we'll have to chat again, Carly. Okay, bye. Thank you all for bye. being here. Wasn't she fantastic, you guys? She is such a doll.